so much longer it seems that some are counting on us to forget how it ended up there. So in light of all this, I can say with complete sincerity that, although a lot of us are still struggling, the economy is in a much better place than it was a year ago. And unless I miss my guess, you would have no difficulty whatsoever agreeing with me on that, would you? There are also those who do the best they can to emphasize the fact that Obama hasn't been able to fix it all with a mere snap of his fingers, and who use this to try to get others to accept that another recession a hundred times worse looms ominously just around the corner. This allegation, of course, is used as further proof that Obama is just basically a bad president and an evil fascist communist foreigner Muslim. Unless I miss my guess, you have no reservations about disagreeing with these people. There are those who are very quick to insist that same-sex couples should be content with civil unions. To this, my response is that it is clearly not equal treatment to ask same-sex couples to be content with something you're not asking different sex couples to be content with. That's a flagrant disparity. Unless I'm mistaken, you would have no reservations here about agreeing with my standing and disagreeing with theirs. There are those who support and those who oppose the right of same-sex adoption. There are those who support and those who oppose abortion rights. If I'm right, you stand with the supporters in both cases. The economy is in a much better place now than it was a year ago. If I'm right, you stand with those who agree with the statement and in opposition to those who disagree with it. Same-sex marriage should be legal. Again, if I'm right, you stand with those who agree and in opposition to those who disagree. Same-sex adoption should be legal. With those in agreement, against those in disagreement, right? The decision of whether to have an abortion should be up to the woman. With the agreeers, against the disagreeers, am I right? So here we have four issues between which the choice between agreement and disagreement is a true dichotomy. Four issues, two views on each one, eight views. You agree with half of them and disagree with the other half, if I know you as well as I believe I do. But observe, you acknowledge all eight of them. The ones you disagree with receive just as much acknowledgement as the ones you agree with. Observe that on these four issues you have no difficulty differentiating between acknowledgement and agreement. On these four issues, you understand that acknowledging the existence of a certain viewpoint is a necessary first step in determining whether you agree or not. So why is it different when I express this view? Why is it that I can't ask you to acknowledge this view and the fact that I hold it without you lecturing me at length about the absurdity of demanding hasty agreement? I hadn't asked for hasty agreement or agreement of any sort. When you commence to respond with this lecture, you misrepresent my position. You strawman me. The longer the lecture, the stronger and more absurd the straw man. Eli, has there been a time when I put words in your mouth? If there has been, do I get to complain about feeling bullied when you object? You see, Eli, I strive to be a rational person, and I'm under the impression that my efforts meet with success most of the time. That being the case, I recognize that reality can be quite different from what we want it to be. That being the case, even if I really really don't want to consider a certain possibility. If evidence supports it, I have no choice. The possibility this is in regards to, in this case, is the possibility that, every time I present reasoning for my position, you do something akin to this. Now, as I say, I don't want to come to this conclusion. I'm trying not to. But you are making it increasingly difficult for me to avoid it. You're almost asking me to either accept this conclusion or give up on reason. You say that you don't know what one ought to believe. If I had asked what one ought to believe, this would be a good answer, but I hadn't. What I had asked is if you have any God beliefs. My question wasn't about whether one should, but whether you do. Treating one question as an entirely different question is a straw man. Now, if you simply prefer not to answer, that's different. That's entirely up to you, and I would not contest that. But if that's the case, then just say, I prefer not to answer. I mean, at least then you're acknowledging that this is not an answer to the question. When you say that you don't know what to believe, you certainly know whether to believe that, or do you? How do you know whether to believe that you know whether to believe that you know whether to believe that you don't know what to believe? What if you're wrong about that? Maybe you're mistaken to believe such a thing. Maybe you would be better off neither believing nor not believing that you neither believe nor don't believe that you neither know nor don't know what to believe or not believe. Have you had the chance to examine that? You tell me that you haven't had the chance to examine whether agnosticism and atheism are compatible or not, that you haven't had the chance to examine the basis for this statement. That's bullshit. I know that you have had the chance. I gave it to you myself, remember? Months ago, with regards to my video about special pleading, you said that you wanted to examine the script. I sent it to you. 
under the impression that examining the script would entail examining the reasoning utilized therein. Why does that reasoning remain unexamined? Why do you have such difficulty giving this position the very same acknowledgement you have no reservations about giving this position, agree with it or not? Why do you so object to taking even the first small step in figuring out whether you agree or don't? The problem here, Eli, isn't that you haven't had the chance to consider it, because you have. It's that whether you have the chance or not, you refuse to. Now hold on a minute. That is your right. It is absolutely your right to simply refuse to consider something. If you don't want to consider it, then by all means don't. All I ask, first, is that you acknowledge that this is in fact what you are doing, and second, that you acknowledge what my position actually is, and stop strawmanning it. Decline to answer the question if you want, but for crying out loud, don't avoid it. Don't offer up a non-answer as an answer. 